Hey friends! In this tutorial, we're going to be painting a butterfly on paper, and we're going to be using acrylics as well as Neocolor Wax Pastels. And I wanted to show you those in case you're not familiar with them. This is what they look like. They are called wax pastels, but they're more like um, big kid crayons. They're very, um, they're very waxy, and so you can color them and mix them in a really beautiful way with acrylics. As long as the acrylics are dry, you can draw right on top of them and create layers of color, kind of like you would with just layers of paint. So I'm excited to explore these with you, and if you don't have these on hand, you can totally follow along with regular crayons if you'd like to try incorporating those in your painting, or just with layers layers of paint and no wax pastels or crayons at all. So it's totally up to you, but I, I've been really enjoying using these in, these in a series of butterfly paintings that I've been doing recently. So I thought I'd introduce you to them and hopefully you have fun following along. All right, let's get started. Okay, the first thing I did to prepare my paper was paint a layer of gesso on it. So if you can see there's some texture to the paper. That's what I did first, and now we're going to do a layer of color over the gesso, and um, that will be the ground of our butterfly painting. So I think I've thought ahead, and I think I want to use a sort of deep purple color for my background. I really love the contrast of a dark background with the wax pastels that we're going to be using, so I'm going to mix ultramarine blue and some quinacridone magenta, and we're gonna mix it with the palette knife here. We're just gonna see what we get. And when you're mixing these two colors, because they're really deep colors to begin with, they get really dark. It's hard to tell the shade sometimes. Um, it almost looks black right now. So I think I'm gonna put in just a tiny touch of white to see the color a little bit better and then we'll paint it on. Let me get my, my white here. I'm just gonna put in a little bit because a little goes a long way when you're lightening a dark color. I don't wanna go too far, so just a little bit. That didn't change it that much, so I'm going to add a little bit more. You can always add more, so I like to go pretty slow when I'm trying to change a color like that. There, I like that. So now I'm going to get a wide bristle brush and get some water on it and just thin out this background color some. Um, I like to thin it out because then you get some light and dark areas, like the wash is not perfectly even. It's a little bit thicker and thinner in certain areas. You'll, you'll see what I mean. So I'm gonna get some water in my wide brush and kind of mix it into the paint color. There we go. I'm gonna bring it over to the paper and just start stroking along. And now that the color is going over the white paper, you can really see that beautiful purple better. Okay. So I'm just going to paint over the edges a little bit. Um, I can scrub the color off my, my table, so I don't care about that. And I'm just going to get all the way to the edges. And I love like the light and the dark wash. And how kind of imperfect and pretty it is as it goes over the gesso layer. I really like that. And the more water you have in the paint, the more it's going to kind of settle into the texture of the paper. But I find if I have too much water to um, the acrylic, I'm, it's, it gets hard to dry and then it dries like very slowly. And I like to kind of just get it dry with the blow dryer quickly so I can move on to the next layer. So I try not to add a ton of water just enough to kind of get it to flow a little bit. Get this last corner. There. Okay, 
I'm gonna rinse out my brush and then we are going to blow dry. All right, so we're all dry now. See, and I didn't add too much water, so that dried pretty quickly. Um, what I'm gonna do is sketch out my butterfly shape with one of my white wax pastels, the Neo Color pastels. So I have a little nub of one here. And I wanted to show you some of the images that I'm gonna be looking at. There is just a couple different pictures I have pulled up here that are just fun inspiration. I really like this one, the one that's blue with these pretty white stripes on it and some darker areas. Um, I'm not sure about how much the dark is gonna show up against the dark background, so I might end up changing those black areas to a different color, but I really like the pattern of it. So that's what I'm gonna be looking at while I sketch and um, while I'm painting, and I'll point out certain areas of it to you um, as we go along. But I always like to find the center of my paper too when I'm doing a butterfly. This is a really simple technique. I'm just measuring using my brush as a measuring um, tool and just making sure that I'm getting the body in the center because when you're trying to paint something that's sort of symmetrical, it can be really frustrating if your drawing is majorly off center and then there's much less room on one side for one side of the wings than there is on the other. So I'm just gonna mark like the center and about the level that I want the, actually I think I want its head to be in down a little bit. I'm gonna just erase this part because I want the wings to come up and over the, the body of the butterfly. So we're gonna start it about there and then just keep going from there. And as I've, and I don't really worry about getting very detailed in the anatomy of the body, but there's a head, there is a middle portion and then the bottom, thinner part. So that's about as detailed as I get. <laughs> there we go. And then we're just gonna keep going and get the, the wing shape. And you can sketch and erase, and I love these um, wax pastels because they erase really well. And so if I make mistakes, I just pull out my eraser and keep perfecting it. And, Except I do wanna say that I don't, um, I don't try to get everything so symmetrical that it's like 100% perfect. I could work for hours trying to get these perfectly symmetrical, but I like the imperfect, the imperfect quality of the butterfly being a little bit wonky, if you know what I mean? Like, like there's just, there's a handmade quality still, and I'm not trying to make it photorealistic. So if it has that handmade quality of being a little asymmetrical, um, that's fine. And I, I actually like that about my drawings and my paintings of butterflies, that they're not perfect. They're not photorealistic. But I do like to try to approximate as close as I can to get them. Like I'm looking at this space here and um, trying to get that spacing similar because I'm aware of like, when somebody's gonna try to put it into a frame, the frame's gonna be like, um, you know, cropping the image in a certain way. And if you have a lot of extra space on one side, then it can be like a little bit um, like distracting when you're framing it, if it's like majorly off center. So, and also when I'm trying to paint the patterns on the, um, on the wings, if I have way bigger, a way bigger wing on one side, and then on the other side, I'm not gonna be able to get the patterns to look like they're roughly symmetrical because there's just so much more space on one than the other. So I pay attention to those things, but, um, but then kind of just try to not feel too constrained to get it perfect. Okay, I'm gonna just clean this up a little bit. Okay, I feel like I'm gonna maybe bring this out just a little bit further. Looks like this one's a little bit bigger, so there we go. Okay, 
So now that we've got the butterfly sketched in there, I'm gonna think about my first layer. And when we're looking at the picture, there is this um, just kind of blue tone that's generally everywhere on the wings. I mean, the black and the white go over it, but I'm gonna think about just that blue color and I'm gonna do it everywhere on the wings. And I'm going to do, I think I'm gonna start out with a wax pastel because I think that would be really pretty. So I'm gonna use a light kind of a blue and I'm gonna color just like this. And I'm just gonna fill in generally the whole wing. And I'm just following sort of the direction. So butterflies often have like little lines in their wings. And so I try to think about my strokes going in the direction of those lines and those segments in the wings. Even if I'm not really drawing those segments completely, I'm still trying to make all of my, the direction of my strokes match that direction. Cause then it kind of, um, communicates to your eye that they're, that's the direction that the, the markings are on on the wings. I'm gonna go here and you can see like if you push harder on the pastel, you can get a pretty solid light blue, which I love. I love that light effect on the dark. You can always go dark, you know, push harder and get lighter colors, um, almost thinking in reverse of when you're coloring on white paper, if you push harder, you get a darker color, but if you push harder here, you're getting a lighter color. Okay, I'm gonna just kind of, I'm almost just sort of arbitrarily <laughs> making some creases kind of going up that way. There, I like that. I'm gonna leave that and I'm gonna go ahead and try to match this side to what I was doing over there. kind of go light texture. Having a photo reference is really nice. I don't, I try to leave myself as much creative room to change whatever I feel like changing about my photo reference. Sometimes when I'm painting butterflies, I want, I, I love something really specific about the image I'm looking at. And so I really want to capture that in my painting. Um, other times I really love the markings, like the patterning of the butterfly, but I don't really care about the, I don't care for the colors. And so I'll completely change the color palette, or maybe I'll just change some of the colors and stay true in other ways. So I try to, um, like my goal is just to create something beautiful, something whimsical and fun. And that captures like the beauty of butterflies in general, but I don't feel completely constrained to, um, you know, capture it one-to-one -one perfectly. And that's how I, that's how I, um, that's why I think about all photo references, basically. Like I'm using my creativity to interpret what's in that reference. And I'm not there to, you know, my goal is not to make a photorealistic painting um, or something that's 100% accurate necessarily. I want to kind of capture the spirit of the thing and then also inject my own creativity and my own color decisions and choices. And, um, and I think that's what really makes your art personal is when you start taking liberties from your image and making creative decisions that have to do with you and your personal taste. And so, um, yeah, I just want to encourage you in that, that you can change anything about your reference that you want um, to suit you better. So I'm not feeling, you know, constrained by this picture that I have to make it 100% the same. I'm just going to do some of these creases because in, the, um, in the photo reference, there's these sort of creases on the bottom and I'll show you again, like right here, there's these little creases. So I'm just looking at those and, and putting those in. OK, 
Okay. I think that's a good start. So now I think I'm going to, I'm going to do some acrylic now and take a break from the pastels. And I think I'm going to make some sort of color that's going to be the stand in for those black markings. Cause I don't think I want black. I want something else. So I think I'm just pondering what would be a really pretty color to go with the purple. So you know what, this image that I'm working from doesn't have any yellow. I think I'm gonna replace that black with like a golden yellow. I already got white, but I didn't mean to get white now that I've decided on yellow. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do yellow ochre. And then also cadmium yellow medium. And the reason I'm gonna do yellow is because yellow and purple are comp complementary colors. And so I think that's gonna look really beautiful with the yellow and the blue on the purple background. So we're gonna try that. I'm gonna change my yellow a little bit with the yellow ochre. I always love to kind of make my yellows a bit deeper and more rich than just that plain out of the tube yellow. So we're gonna start there. And I'm just going to kind of gently stroke over the um, surface of the paper and let the texture of that gesso layer pick up the um, paint and kind of let it sit on top of the paper like that. I love that. So it doesn't fill in all the, all the dips in the paper. It kind of sits on top of the ridges and allows some of that, that texture to show through. And also I like to just keep loose, kind of loose and brushy with my marks. And I think that really um, just makes the painting more fun, have a more like whimsical kind of um, interpretation to the, to the butterfly than being like really smooth and perfect. I love that kind of imperfect mark making. And it goes inwards a little bit here and there. So I'm just gonna try this. Okay, I'm just gonna work around the edge. This is gonna be my border color. I'm just gonna go around the edge of the, the, um, the wing. And like I said before, like following that radiating sort of direction that um, the patterns go on butterfly wings, I'm gonna try to angle my strokes to follow that same sort of radiating um, pattern. And I want it to have a defined edge. So if it's looking like really raggedy here and there, I might close it up with like a little side to side stroke a bit. There, I like that. Okay, so we're going to move over and I'm going to try to do a similar, a similar thing on this side. So I do pay attention and try to make each side, you know, sort of symmetrical, similar, so that it's like not so dissimilar, it's distracting, but I'm okay with there being some, you know, differences. Cause I can't, I can't be a mirror image like that. It's hard. <laughs> Okay, I think that's pretty good. And then I'll come down here and just start creating my edge here. And again, I'm just trying to keep sort of brushing with the flat of my brush and letting the paint kind of rub off onto those ridges. Okay. There, I really like 
like that. Okay, so now I'm thinking if I want to use this yellow anywhere else. I think it would be pretty to have the body, I think, be a lighter color to help it stand out from that dark background. So I'm going to use the yellow ochre and just fill in the body. And since the body is pretty narrow, um, I'm just going to kind of solidly fill it in. It's hard to like keep a lot of texture in there because it's a small, pretty small shape. So I'm going to just sort of fill it in and then I'll add back some textural strokes with the, um, with the wax pastels and with another layer of paint probably to get more of the dimension into the body. There we go. And once I've got some wet areas around um, that are going to make it hard to keep working without hitting those wet areas and smearing them around and mixing um, colors that I don't want to mix, I'm going to um, stop and blow dry and then we will continue on after that. Okay, so the yellow took a little longer to blow dry because I put it on pretty thick. Oh, this part's even a little bit a little bit wet still. So I'm going to leave that be and work on the center part of the butterfly while this sort of just sits and dries a bit more. The body is completely dry and I was thinking about how I want to detail the body and what I want to do with the rest of the wings. I, when there's a lot of cool in a painting, I love bringing in warm pinks or peaches. So I'm going to use my um, Liquitex light pink color and add in um, some details on the wings and on the body kind of um, I like using this color especially just in a lot of places in my paintings it kind of pulls and unifies the painting pulls it together so I'm gonna get some of my light pink and what I'm gonna do is just sort of add some little highlight areas on the body and these don't have to be perfect I can adjust them I'm just thinking about where the light might hit the body. And with butterflies, their bodies are kind of from far away. They, the way I like to paint them is like kind of smooth. And then having the little segmented part on the bottom with these little like lines to show these little curved lines to show the segments. And really we're being very impressionistic. I'm not, I'm not here to paint the full anatomy of a butterfly. <laughs> but just kind of suggest at what it's like there. And then um, I think what I want to do is use this in the center. Now this is just taking off and doing totally creative license from my image. So I'm going to just do some radiating lines of this color to kind of um, I don't know, add some more segments to the wings because it's just so much solid blue. I feel like it would be really lovely to have some of this. So I'm going to do that on the top, but to kind of help the top wings, the top set of wings feel separate from the bottom ones, I think I'm going to use this color, but in a different place on the bottom ones, not have these radiating right here. I think I'm going to spread it around a little bit. So we'll see how that works out. <laughs> If it doesn't work out, then we can always go over it. That's what I love about that's what I love about these um, wax pastels and acrylics. You can always paint over acrylics, and you can always erase the wax pastels or paint over them. They're a really great companion to acrylics. I I love them on paper because you have the firm the firm table underneath that you can push against when you're coloring. Um, and so you can get some really lovely scribbly marks with them and some really lovely texture uh, that, um, I don't know, just adds just such a fun, fun element of mark making to your painting. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of this, I guess just on the edge of the yellow. <laughs> that's where I started, so I think that's a good, a good way to go. Okay, so we'll just work our way around here. I 
I kind of changed my mind about up here. It looks a little too, I don't know, different looking there. Um, so I think I will put just a few little radiating there. That helps help it. That helps it look more unified. There, I like that a lot. So this is this is kind of the midpoint, I think, where we have some color in all areas. We have some mark making in all areas, but now we're gonna start refining. We're gonna add some more dimension, some more layers, and really make everything come together and look really um, beautiful and more polished. So I'm gonna rinse out my brush here, and I think I'll go ahead I think I'm gonna go ahead and do my white markings because when I'm making a painting, it's hard for me to envision the final painting and what would be a really good way of finishing it if I don't have all the values. So the values are the lightest, like the um, light scale, light to dark scale of a painting. Oh, I already have white out here, perfect. Um, so white is the lightest value in our painting and this is probably the darkest value, this dark purple. So if I don't have the lightest value and the darkest value, it's hard for me to really think through how I wanna handle all the other colors. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put in my white. Now the cool thing about this butterfly is that the white stripe, as you can see, like starts on the bottom wing and crosses over and continues on the top wing. They line up, which is so pretty, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do these first. Okay. And for markings, I really try to break up solid shapes. So even though that marking looked really like a solid line, I'm gonna make it a little softer by doing a series of short strokes and I'm gonna leave some spaces in between them because um, I like how that adds some painterly texture to it. If I painted it as a solid stripe going like against the direction of the wings and um, everything, it would look more like something that somebody had slapped on the top of the butterfly as opposed to like part of the butterfly. And so doing little strokes that are also radiating in that same sort of direction that all the other markings are going, um, doing those, doing my um, stripes like that helps it feel much more as part of the, the actual wing of the butterfly. And then the, the marking really sort of breaks up near the top and you get it breaking into like more sort of um, spots like near there. So then I'm just gonna look at it and see if there's any parts I want to adjust I think in some areas I'm gonna make it a little bit more solid. There, I like that. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and just do our next, our next row. Now this is interesting. These ones kind of curve, so I'm gonna do some little curving marks. Now I'm gonna do these against the direction because they're more like little spots than anything else, so I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna make them out of strokes this direction because they're so small, I'm just gonna stick them on there. There we go. Okay, and then these ones are just more like little spots. go. Okay, so now I'm going to go over to the other side and try to follow the same sort of path that I did curving upwards.
Okay, and again, the stripe kind of starts breaking up into more like spots near the top. There we go. Okay, and then we're gonna do the little markings up here. Actually, I think I'll start near the bottom again. There we go. And then we'll do these ones across the bottom edge. Ooh, I feel like I did too few here, so then I did try to make one into two. <laughs> uh, we'll fix that maybe a little bit. All right. Actually, I kind of like how that looks more connected there, so I'm actually going to do that on this bottom part, and then there will be nothing to fix. There we go. I like it how it's, it's kind of connected more like a stripe. There. Like that. Okay. Let's see. So in my picture, there's no more white spots, but I feel like in my butterfly, I would like to see a little bit more white. So I think I'm going to just do a little rim of white here and that can really help it pop out from that dark background too. So I'm just going to go up on the tip of my brush and kind of stroke that along there. I like that. Okay. I'm going to get it. Um, dried with the blow dryer, and then we'll go ahead and do our next layer. Okay, so for the next stage of the painting, we're going to do lighter tones on the different areas and the different areas of color to um, help some of them pop out more. So what I'm thinking of is I want to do some lighter bluish turquoise um, in these areas to kind of create like light shining on the wings, on the blue areas of the wings. And then I think I want to add some lighter yellow and maybe a little bit of color in the white, like some streaks of color, kind of like the wings are um, having like a little shine or something coming through the white. So anyway, we'll see what happens with that. But let's go ahead and start with the light blue or a light turquoise. So I think... I want to go more blue than turquoise, so I'm going to use cobalt blue and white. Actually, yeah, no, we'll try cobalt blue. I think that'll be fine. Actually, I changed my mind. <laughs> I'm not going to do cobalt blue. I want to do phthalo blue because phthalo blue is a really intense color, and I love how, um, how it mixes with white, and it makes a really intense light color. We need our whites, some more white. Um, cobalt blue gets a little bit more on the on the gray side. It turns a bit more gray. It doesn't keep its intensity as much when I mix it with white. So that is why what I'm thinking of. So see how beautiful and intense of a blue that is. So I want something that will be a nice blue, but will also be a little bit lighter. Let's see. I also had the thought we could add some dark blue back in, which might be pretty. So let's try this first though. Okay, so I'm just going to make some little streaks that kind of go over the pink, maybe over the white a little bit. Just kind of like the light glistening on that blue part of the wings. And as I'm looking at the picture, you can see like the lighter blue is more dominant. I'm looking more at this wing than that wing for my reference. The light blue is more dominant here and then the darker color is on the outside. So I think I'm going to leave the darker purple showing more there and keep the light blue kind of on this side of the white. And I think that creates an interesting kind of segmentation to the wings, which is really pretty. Just really lightly creating some creases 
It's a little shine. I'm thinking of it as like the light kind of shining on the wings. Ooh, that's fun. Okay, I don't want to overdo it. It's easy to overdo it, so I think I'm going to stop there. I'm going to do the same thing here and leave the dark more dominant in that area. And I can do some little bit of overlapping over my white if I want to, or even like go right through it a bit. I think that's pretty. Yeah, it's interesting because it's making this much more similar and then these are like similar on the outside. I'm wondering if I like, I'm trying to assess whether I like that extreme difference. I think what I'm gonna do is dry the blue and then I'm gonna use a darker color, like a dark blue probably, to create some details in these purple outer areas. And then I'm gonna also use it on these inner areas for a little bit of shadowing. And I think that's gonna tie the two sides because right now it looks like kinda extreme difference there. And I'm not a huge fan of that. I think also um, before I go a lot further, I think I will, carry some of these streaks all the way through and that actually that actually unifies yeah I think I like that too I think I'm going over the white a little too much for my taste, so I'll probably go back and touch that up too. These are all the things I'm thinking about that are like popping into my mind as I'm working and creating. I always create like a little to-do list. Sometimes I forget what they were, <laughs> but it's good to have like a little list like, oh yeah, I want to improve that. Um, this is, you know, going a little too far, but it's okay. It's on my to-do list. I'm going to fix it. And then I kind of just think about my paintings like that as just like a series of problem solving. And um, you just tackle one thing at a time and I know it's not finished, so it's okay if it looks a little bit weird right now because we're gonna come back and fix it. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> okay, I already like that a lot better when the light blue is going into the dark a bit more. You can still see that there's a difference, but I like that's that, um, a little bit more of continuity between the two sections. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse out my brush. This whole area has a lot of wet paint. And when you color the Neo colors on top of the wet paint, they don't, um, they don't really give off their pure intense color. They get kind of mixed in and I prefer them to be separate. So I'm going to dry this and then we'll move on. Okay, I think I'll go ahead and do the dark blue that we were talking about, and then I'll come back and do white uh, at the end. So let's see, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try out this sort of a blue. This is um, an ultramarine blue, which I think will be nice. I'm just gonna, maybe I'll start in this area so I can kind of see. So it's hard to see. I don't even know if you can, can really see on the video. It's a really subtle difference between the dark blue and the purple. But in, in person, you can kind of see it adds a bit more dimension. So I like that, but I think you'll be able to see it better on. Yeah. I'm gonna use it, I think, to um, separate the two wings a little bit. That's pretty. I like that over the turquoise. And then I'm, I like to have the body stand out. So I use it as like kind of to darken around the body just a little bit. There, I don't want to overdo it. I really like that. So I like this, how it's subtle. It's just a subtle change. So I'm going to go ahead and 
just create sort of subtle creases. Oh, that's really pretty. I like that a lot. Just creates a bit more dimension. Just kind of looking and seeing. Pondering if I like how far I've gone. I think I'm going to leave that. And I think that's really pretty. I'll just do a bit of it down in this purple area to kind of match what I had over here. And then I'll come over and define underneath this wing a little bit. And then along the edge of the body. So I just love visually how um, having that separation, having a little bit of a dark border around the body of the butterfly just helps it pop out. I like that look. Um, Real butterflies don't always have that, that real separate look between their body and um, the wings, but I, I just like how it looks in my paintings. <laughs> so I go with it. Here. There, I like it. I like that a lot. Okay. So now I think I'm gonna th um, think about the body a little bit, just to take a break from the wings. And then we're going to go back and do our touches up on the yellow and stuff like that. So I'm going to do a dark brown this time. Kind of have a um, little bit of a shadow under each of these sections. Do a little bit of a, yeah. And then we can... Add a little bit of texture by doing just some little strokes on the body. Nothing too extreme because I want to keep it pretty painterly, but there, that's nice. I might darken these a little bit. There, I think that's enough. And then let's go ahead and do just probably yellow and white. I'm going to Gonna lighten up just the yellow that I still have left over on my palette. A little bit of white. I don't want it to go too pastel. I just want a lighter shade to kind of make the edges of the wings pop a bit more. Let's see what that does. If I put it on there and I don't like it, um, I'll you know adjust it, but sometimes you just have to get it on there. I think that's good. Just basically trying to like define the edges a little bit, give it a bit of a lighter look. Yeah, hope it'll pop out a bit more. I need to make some more. There we go. Okay. And now, I, th 
there we go. I don't want to overdo it. I keep saying that. I my natural tendency is to keep adding and to keep adding and to keep adding till I've basically like covered over what was below it. So I have to use a light hand so we can still see that darker shade of the yellow ochre and the the um, just the cadmium yellow medium kind of that mixture that darker tone because the highlights won't look like highlights anymore if they completely cover over the dark color it'll just become the new like base color so um, I'm gonna rinse out my brush and, and we're gonna blow dry and then take a final look at what our finishing touches need to be okay so I think as I'm looking it over I feel like I wanna add a little bit of a brighter pink where some of these peach touches are just right in the middle here. I don't think I'm gonna do it around the edges. Um, we'll see. <laughs> but I think I'd really like to have a bit more of a magenta pink, like a light magenta pink instead of peach because the peach, I don't know, is feeling a little drab to me. So we're gonna just see what the pink does. It's hard for me to make a painting without pink in it somewhere. Um, Cause I just, I love the versatility of it. You can, I don't know, you can make all different shades. You can make them warmer, you can make them cooler and they just add a fun pop to the painting. Okay, so I think that's a pretty good shade. And I already like it because I think it, it pairs so well with that aqua and the yellow that, um, really really like it so I'm just gonna do some really light strokes just kind of over where that peach is there just really I think I'm I'm liking the subtlety so not too intense this isn't like the you know focal point of the painting but it makes the wings feel a bit more I don't know if iridescent, iridescent is the right word but like having different colors shine on them. Here we go. I think I do change my mind. I'm gonna put it down here. <laughs> Just a few little touches. I like that a lot. Okay, I'm gonna leave it. So now we're gonna do just a bit more touching up in the white. The white got really blended in and it's more of like a background. It feels like it's in the background now because other colors have gone over it. And I wanna pull it to the foreground and make it a bit more bold. So I'm gonna see if I can just swipe some of this white off from behind. I've got white in a bunch of different places on my palette, so I'm just gonna steal it and try to bring it over here and get it on my brush. A little bit on the tip there. So I'm gonna try to be careful because I feel like some of these sections, I like how hazy they are, but I also wanna help the white feel just a bit more bold. Yeah. Here we go. And I'm just gonna do a bit over on this side. There, I like that. Okay, all right, I think the final thing that we're gonna add, it feels very well-rounded now. I don't see any areas that are really saying to me that they need a bunch more work. So I'm gonna add in our antennas. I'm gonna pick, what if I light? Hmm. I think that's a little too light. I think I'm gonna go more for like a yellow ochre and we'll see, we'll see how light it goes on this background. Eh, that doesn't really stand out enough. I'm gonna go back to that lighter yellow color. Okay, so we're just gonna go up 
a little line. And then butterfly antennas are a little thicker at the end. So we just make it a bit wider there. So we'll sketch it on there. And if you go wrong the first time, don't worry, these can erase. Sometimes it's hard to do something so delicate your hand wants to get wobbly. So I like to kind of anchor my hand with my pinky and then I can kind of float my hand over the rest of the painting and it gives me some stability. There we go. I think that's perfect. So I'm going to leave it at that and I hope you had a lot of fun painting along with me or just watching along and that this gives you some inspiration for painting your own butterfly. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye for now.